Hey everybody, it's Brenda Schwader with from Saudi to Casita. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty then. Let's get on our way. I just kind of wanted to wrap up and show you a few of the things we've done in the in the past uh, couple of weeks uh, with aluminum. You guys, it's all been aluminum for the last six uh, six months. This is the sixth month that I've been doing this sponsorship for uh, for John Bead. And it's been a blast. This is there's two more weeks after this, so we're gonna you know we're gonna uh, finish up in um, at the end of June. And the reason for that, look at all these great pieces. I gotta say, I've just been having a ball. Uh, and this is this will be today's um, with doing aluminum wire and everything else that goes with it from John Deed. Let's get their tag back up here. As soon as I start mussing around with this, the uh, the overlay goes off. I wish that wouldn't happen, but it does. Anyway, so if you're interested in downloading the patterns for today's, we've got a non-jig pattern and we've got a jig pattern. The non-jig pattern is available at bead projects and PDFs from John Bead. That's a Facebook group. I hope they're up already. If not, just give it a couple hours. It'll probably be up by tomorrow. <laughs> I pulled a fast one on Carmi again and got it to her this morning. It's been so, so busy. Uh, if not, uh, and you want them faster than that, um, and I don't do this purposely, it's just my own my own organized self, um, you can find them. Um, Sarah has them pinned to the top of, of www.brendashwader.etsy.com. Also, I want to tell you, give you guys a heads up, because you are my faithful listeners, that... <sighs> By probably August 1, I'm going to take all those templates down, okay? So get them while they're hot. Um, um, I got an announcement to make about that, but I'm not going to make it today because <laughs> I tend to do that. Uh, but uh, just a little hint to you, all of those patterns will be taken down and the Etsy site is going to be turned over to be something else. So, um, so it won't be now that's a jig anymore. So both bad and good. Wish me well. It's, it's okay. So um, let's see here. What else? Da, 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 da. And please, please do join me on Instagram. My handle is at Brenda Schwader Jewelry, all lower cases, no spaces. <laughs> that rhymes. Um, so that you can see Lynn later and um, also just, uh, just see all the cool stuff I've got. I'm just doing a load of content on Instagram. It's where I'm at now. Just love it. Um, so join me over there. Every once in a while I'll share something just to kind of tease you over the Brenda Schweider Jewelry Facebook page, but otherwise that's what's going on. Um, I think that's about oh, one more thing. I just want to let you know. Sandy asked this morning, my love, uh, what if you can't, you need something from John Bede and you are forgetting Okay, good. Uh, you're forgetting how to find John B. product. Um, there is a craft shop, which I will be putting the links in there, and I'll try to put the overall link in if I can find it again. Um, but uh, it's called the Craft Shop on Amazon. I don't believe you can you can um, search for it in the search bar, but um, if you can't find something, just go ahead and email info at John B. through your emails, and they will be happy to help you. Just tell them Brenda sent you. Okay, cool, cool beans. All right, wow. Always amazes me. It takes about 15 minutes to get through all this stuff, but I got your attention, so I keep you. <laughs> I'm so sneaky. All righty, so let's see here. Let us get back to, we're going to add this guy right here, and we're going to switch over to here. So I become little, and this becomes big. Here's our jewelry cam for found object maker. And, um, oh, I see a little teardrop on the emojis. I know, it's probably because I'm crying again. <laughs> anyway, so what I thought we would do, you guys, is all of the instructions. I'm going to show you here with, with what's going on here. I'm, that, that reverse model here with the airflow going because it's, it's hot out today here in Arizona. I think in the upper 90s. Um, 
we've got instructions, guys. And here's what you get. This is going to be in that free file that I, I talked about before over at John B. Um, and this is everything you need right here to be able to go ahead and make this cool calder -esque cuff. Um, you know, if I could do just Calder stuff all day, I would. Um, I try to do my own spin on it because, you know, we don't want to copy Mr. Alexander too much. Um, but here's the jig. Here, let me put it under here. Here's the jig version, and that's the one that I printed off on vellum, if you guys have. Now, um, now that's a jigs, which I'm sorry to say are not available anymore. So, so sorry. Um, but here, here's what we've got, and then we've got the non-jig one, and what we do is, you can see how this one's compact just because you're making it on the jig, uh, but we know that you guys who don't have a jig want to make, possibly do this kind of a thing, and this is exactly the length um, that you would do. Now, you can also, if you've got a tiny wrist or you've got someone who has a little bit bigger wrist, uh, even possibly a man. Uh, you can make this custom just by, you know, removing one of these uh, sets here. Okay, so everything you need on this, and you're all, they're all set. All, all set. So here's here's the baby, and this one I made without the jig, and so you can kind of see that it's it's a little bit. I did pretty good, but you can see there's a little bit of, you know, not really lining up here. Um, and this one, I added the Preciosa Crystal on. This this color, can you just see there's a tiny bit of yellow in it's called Honey. And I will put, let's see if I can find, I put this up here before. Da, da, da. I'm going to put both Facebook groups. Oh, is that what I wanted? Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> Let's copy that and put this back down. I believe if we go back to comments, that's right, Debbie. New doors do open when others close. And it's a door I've been meaning to open for, for a long, long time. Hey, Fran. Um, so let's press chat here um, and see if this loads up. It's taking its time. While it's doing that, I'm going to go back down. What happened? What happened? Oh, there, it filled in. Okay, looks like it all went. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and find the 12 gauge. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. So sorry. I thought that was up there and it was not. So I'm going to have to search for the file. Search for John B. Links. So many moving parts on bed. How about John B. Let's see here. John B. Links. Seven days. No, 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 no. Hmm. That's funny. How about? How about? Do, 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 do. Aha! There it goes. So, um, so for this one, I'm going to give you all the 12 gauge um, pieces. The link for that one copy and I'm going to go back down to here and I'm going to go back down to here. Here we go. Here I am. And I can see me. I know you could always see me. Here's the 12 gauge link. We're using two two kinds of wire and one is um, is this. It's a uh, 26 gauge which is which is not um, the aluminum wire from John B comes in two gauges. It comes in 12 and 18. And 18 is just too, too big to do any kind of um, binding with. So I did pick up, so you want to pick up some 26 gauge. Um, and this is a gold tone. Um, it's just a really more like a thread wire. Okay. So cool, cool, cool. Oh, looks like it all went through. Yahoo. All right. Okay. So here we go. So I thought this one is in 
the, here we go, this is in the copper color, you guys, and that is in your instructions as well. And then this is what I'm talking about here with the 26 gauge. Looks like it kind of went a little crooked there. And you can see right here what I do is just start lopping this over. We'll talk about this a little bit more. But these are the honey colored rondelles from Preciosa. Give it up for Preciosa, you guys. This is so cool. Um, and it's the honey tone in the rondelles. This is an 8 millimeter, so you could also do a round bead too, which, which would be cool. But I like how the 8 millimeter fits between there. Um, I don't think I would go up to a 10 millimeter or lower. It just fits so perfectly. Stick with that 8 millimeter bead, you guys. Alrighty. So I thought what we would do is I'd give you a little surprise today. You can see on your template. See here that we have this one here, this little guy, but there's only one. But I dreamed up something, and Sarah's always my like, yeah, we can make that work. So we've got a little option to add two more here, which is great for work on the jig. That's another reason I wanted to work on the jig today. Um, and so we're going to work on this one with 50 inches, guys, of 12 gauge wire. Okay. This is this isn't hard. What's hard is hardening it, making these make sure these straightaways are nice and straight. And we're going to get to that when we get over to uh, to our hardening station, our bench block. And, uh, and then I'm going to show you what these things are for here. It's an idea. All right. Let's cr get cracking. So we're going to go take, this is the 12, uh, this is the, we're going to be working with the gold today. So we're working with copper and gold. These are the metal colors, I guess. I just seemed like I should keep to uh, some of the metal colors when I was working today with uh, with this Calder type of, you know, thing instead of some of the bright colors that we've been working with. I mean, the aluminum wire comes in, in royal and it comes in green and it comes in orange and fuchsia. Um, just so many cool colors. Let's see. Let's see here. I believe this table is like 48. So we're just going to grab a little bit more, you know me, and my measuring. So we're going to cut this much. And God bless us if it's not enough. <laughs> All righty. So oops, we're just going to cut that off, and we're going to put that off to the side. I'm so excited for Sunday, you guys. Um, a great beat extravaganza is so, so cool. And honestly, all the presenters, they work so hard and to bring you cool kits and things that you can do. <laughs> I'm just giving this a, a little bit of a blunt edge here. I don't know why, because I'm going to be cutting it off anyway. So let's, okay, so you can see what's gone on, on over here. I'm going to like put my hammer down here so that you can kind of see what's going on. I don't have the swivel lock in here just because uh, it's going to kind of take up a lot of um, a lot of visual room for you guys. If you can see here, I've got the three uh, quarter inch setups and then I've got two three eighths inch pegs. All the rest of the pegs are here. And then what it says over here is that if you're working with just these two pegs, you're going to repeat this five and a half times. If you happen to have three, three, uh, three, three eighths inch pegs, um, you can, you can work it five times with a repeat. So because it's a repeat, you don't really have to have all these pegs unless this is, this design is going to be your bread and butter, <laughs> but you can't get the pegs anyway anymore. So, so sorry. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on top and I'm just going to go around this. So if you don't have now that's a jig, you would just be following the other uh, pattern that you have and creating this. You want, you'll want you want to mark the 3 8 inch um, spot on your uh, on your pliers. 
on your round nose pliers. And I would suggest um, that getting a, um, so what you're going to do is with the round nose pliers, with this one, that's the round nose. I didn't bring the other one because we won't be working with it. But there's a round nose without the, um, without the nylon jaw over here. You're going to be using the very, very bottom of that and then tweaking it a little bit bigger because it's just shorter. It's just short, okay? Um, and otherwise, just grab a bale making pliers or something else in your stash that's 3 eighths of an inch, okay? Now with this setup though, there's a little bit of tweaking that you're going to need to do just to kind of keep things straight. But you can see here that I'm just sort of just making sure everything is straight and I want to have enough room to get through here. I'm actually going to come and just tweak these down, make sure that these are all on the same, on the same plane and then pull, whoopsie, pull that tight again. <laughs> all right. So here I'm going to kind of come down and again, I'm just going to be straightening this out with my thumb because it's so super easy with, uh, with the aluminum wire. How am I doing on the big screen there, Susan? <laughs> oh my goodness. How fun. Okay. So here's where we get to the repeat. You saw how easy that was. It was basically just sort of making these three. And then I've got these going on here. And I don't even need my wire lifter, which is another, uh, another piece. So I am going to bring this up and over. And then I'm just going to kind of place this here and then kind of go up to the next one. OK. And then once I've got that, I'm going to, this is this is the crazy part here. Move that up and around. And then I'm going to keep straightening and, and pulling this down. I think I'm going to actually just keep it to here, except I'm going to have to go up and around here. The moral of the story is that I think I'm going to actually take this one out now that I don't need it te temporarily because it's kind of skewing things except for do I have a screwdriver here? No, but I can use something else that shouldn't be used as a screwdriver. Ah, or not. <laughs> that'll break, that'll break. Nope, nope, nope. All right. I'm not going to do that then. Oh, look it. I'm bleeding as usual. It's always me that's doing the bleeding. So much fun on lives, you guys. Here, let's, let's grab something to cauterize. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, it'll be fine. So funny. I'm such a goof. Okay, so we're just going to have that little cotter pin blend in, uh, up there, and then we're just going to work that out. What I want to end up with is, okay, of these three A's, one, two, three, four, five, six on one side, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the other side. Okay, so what we've got is one, three, four. So we're just going to keep on going. If you don't, if you happen not to be working with uh, aluminum, just take and even grab your um, your nylon jaw plier and bring this here because you've got everything set up and it's all it's all anchored in place. So why not use uh, use the jig to your advantage, right? But for you guys, if you're working this way, I would definitely take this one out when you are working it. And I've already lost track of where I am. <laughs> That's okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Too far. All right. So it's a good thing to show all the mistakes, right? So I'm just going to take that last one. That was probably the five and a half. And I'm just going to grab this and start and just straighten it back out with my nylon jaw pliers. Pretty awesome. Hello, Mr. Schwader. You want to come and say hello to everyone? <laughs> yes, I am live because it's Thursday. We have this discussion every week. I have to remind her. <laughs> he has to remind me that I'm going live. Well, come on in here. It's this little bit here. Say hi to all the peoples. Hi, all the peoples. <laughs> What'd you come to tell me? How many people are on here? 20? 30? What? So we got 19 right now. Oh, hello. 19 with 23 comments. One is a little teary-eyed because we did get a little teary-eyed because Susan's youngest son is going to be graduating from high school. So Why would we get teary-eyed? That's exciting. I know, but you know us women. Oh, <laughs> oh everyone's <laughs> waving. Susan's saying hi, Jim. They grew up so fast. Oh, Deb says hi. Hello, Mr. Schwader. You know better Mr. than that, Deb. Um, <laughs> Francis, she loves me improvising, and I also just cut myself. <laughs> How? I I think I was doing something along the pegs here or something. I don't know. Don't. Who knows? Be careful. Don't follow her. Yeah. Don't do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Okay. So. Did you tell them about how I got my my hand cut off when I was little? Oh my God. All right, hurry up because we got to got to get through this. I got my hand cut off when I was little, and they sewed it on backwards. So, so you got you're in this one. There you go. See, <laughs> one's backwards. It's one of his favorite jokes. I've heard this joke since we've been together probably about a million times. So okay. All right. So you are driving to get your hair cut. Okay. Are you gonna pick mother up? And you're getting something to eat. Right. Okay. You want a <laughs> sub sandwich? Sure. Okay, I'll bring that. Back. Woohoo! All right. So. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Jim says goodbye. So, this is what I'm ending up with, you guys, here. Remember, and and I, I flipped it over, and this is where I, I had to go around that other peg. You don't want that because actually I'm getting a little bit of uh, nicking here, too. But here is what we want to do. So, I flipped it over because I want to repeat what I've done at this end on top on this end. And so I'm just going to, again, put this back on. I flipped the whole piece over, right? But now I'm going to come around, and I'm going to finish off here, keeping a nice tension, okay? And here, and here. <laughs> okay, so I got... Over over a foot. Now I know that I probably estimated even over 58 inches because I have lack of wire phobia. Um, but you know that that is way too much wire, especially if you're you know you're kind of wanting to be um, um, you know frugal with your wire. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right. So here we go. This is what we're ending up with. And I'm going to do a little clip here and a little clip there. And then we're going to just straighten these all these guys out. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six on one side and one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. Hopefully this is going to work. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe I should have done something else. Maybe not. I think if I would have done something else. I would, I would have been finishing on, and I wanted to finish with both of these guys coming down on the, on the, the right way here. Okay, so let's get our, our cutter out here. <laughs> and the, the, isn't that funny? My, um, my brother-in-law, whenever he uh, hosts us, he always like ends up getting way too much food, so he calls that lack of foodophobia. <laughs> So, um, so now I just use that, um, yeah. So, 
<laughs> Thanks, Carrie. She, Carrie says, don't get hurt. All right. So what I'm going to do, you guys, is right, right where the wire is starting to overlap with itself, I want that loop to go flat. And I don't want it to, to get bigger. I want it to stay the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to snip just before where that starts to overlap. And how I know I did it right is if I put it down and there's no scuffing or anything. So we've got, we're ending up with three loops here. To be honest, one of the reasons I did this, you guys, was um, I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. Okay, just with the flat part of the back facing where that that piece of uh, that loop is ending. Okay. And push that flat, and here we go. Is because we're still working with aluminum wire. Okay. So how we're gonna get a cuff to stay rigid enough is by doing some tempering, right? Some hammering of that so that it stays as a cuff. And so we're going to be working, working, working in that. Some of these simpler pieces are a little bit more work sometimes. So I'm building in a fail safe here because honestly, this one looks really, really good. Um, it's a small, but let me just show you here. It looks good, but it's too small for me. This is for someone with a smaller wrist, uh, maybe a kiddo, maybe uh, my friend Terry. <laughs> Hi, Terry, who has a, a smaller wrist. Um, she's she's tiny, um, and and so this has a you know a bit of temper in it. it you're not going to be able to you know go reaching in a bag of stuff uh, with this on with aluminum jewelry on. That's just it's not just not what it's going to hold up to. Okay, so we've got this. Let's go ahead and straighten some areas out here. First, I'm going to just do with this John Bead Metalwork Hammer. I'm going to get everything flattened and on it. Well, is that really how I want to be doing it? Probably. Um, so I know that I really want to work these little nublins out, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open it up just like a jump ring, OK? And get some of these things out of the way the same way so that I can go back Can you see this isolate that one and just using the corner of your um, wow that's really nice <laughs> aren't I funny when I'm impressed with myself so that's where that little extra bend was okay um, and it, it really worked well to do that. So I'm going to do again as I'm going to, toward me, isolate, not that one, toward me right above it and toward me right below it. And I'm just going to keep going like that. It's always good to know a little bit of a workaround, right? So again, toward me and toward me. And here I'm actually going to, if you can work a little bit elevated, that's even better. I'm trying to think what I can elevate with. If you have an anvil, that's really what you're going to be because basically now we're working with some length here. So I'm going to flip it and I'm going to do it this way. I need to get into that area. And I'm just kind of. nuzzling up to that and kind of bringing everything back in. But you can see it's really, really doing some nice stuff here. And so now I'm going to go back and kind of just straighten these out. And I've got two more of these little guys to do. So again, I'm going to go toward me with, uh, with one isolating that and then toward me with it. So I'm isolating just that piece that I want to hammer. What's nice is that this is a nice little end and it's giving me a really nice way to get in to, um, to those uh, areas that I want to isolate. So toward me, I'm really having to think about this, guys. 
and toward me. So what I ended up doing, because I didn't have a really high um, surface area, um, is that I did half and then I came back and flipped it and did the other half. Okay. And still not really getting that where I want it. Some of it you can just, this aluminum is so buttery soft that you can just really just move some of it by your fingers, with your fingers. And even here between these two, I'm just going to isolate this and straighten that back out because there was a little bit of a bump in there. So I always just think about like, how can I get at that? <laughs> You might want to not want to do it as angrily as I just did. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just I'm just kind of got these going here and it's looking pretty good. So just going back and we're just gonna build in some temper here. So we're giving the wire something to think about. And giving it a memory and basically right now we're just kind of hardening this up you notice I did a little bit more gentle over this where the where the loops uh, overlap themselves okay so okay the thing is um, you know, the beauty of this piece is the repetition, right? I mean, that's one of our design principles. And um, and that everything is nice and parallel. So you kind of want to just kind of work on that, work each one. Um, because before you form it into a C, you really want that to, to sort of be in order. Look at that puppy. That's pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. Okay. So what I thought I would do is just kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how to go ahead and add this because I told you that this is what we were going to be making. But then I'm going to switch gears and we're not going to finish it that way because, you know, I never like to make anything twice. So I'm going to look down here and see what kinds of beads did we use that were so pretty last time. I'm not sure that I would actually use these together, but maybe I would, but I just kind of want to give you an idea how to start this, okay? <laughs> these, uh, oh, I could put these earrings on today. I forgot to put earrings on. Never mind. Focus, Brenda. Okay, so I think what I did here is, I know this is what's in, in the instructions, is that I just cut off like two feet of this 26 gauge and basically just to think of this binding wire as like a um, a thread, right? It's just it's just gonna help you get these guys to stay on. And I'm gonna double this. I'm so excited I'm getting a sandwich. <laughs> Doesn't take much for me. I hate cooking so much anytime that there's like food coming that I don't have to even think about. So I'm just making this little tiny loop here and I'm going to start it. Let's see here. Oops. Oh my goodness. Uh, hi Terry. Uh oh, I lost. How did I lose the... Oh dear you guys. I lost the whole thing. So let's invite myself back on. Email to my clipboard. I don't know how that happened. I bet you it was Jim's fault, hey? Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's go over here. That's so interesting. Well, uh, you'll be you'll be learning through me. This is my top-down camera here. This is my phone. And so I have to go into my email and I have to link me up again. How interesting, huh? Okay, I'm entering a broadcast studio. Isn't that something? <sighs> oh, so I'm going to uh, allow, let's allow the microphone and the camera. I'm going to mute myself. 
and I'm going to go into the mic and camera, go into the camera, I'm going into the back camera so we can have a better picture, and then we're going to get out, and then um, oh, we have to enter the studio, here we go, it has to be on horizontal, let's see if we can get this back in here, my goodness, add to stream, and here we go. Ta-da! So silly. Not sure how we got off, but we did. So what you can do when we have these loops here, uh, you can see part of part of the uh, the challenge here is that to keep these guys in the same area. So if you're working with a loop, and and the reason I kind of went down a little bit further was because this one I did by hand, and not everything was lining up. Okay, so I could, if I want my string of uh, crystals to kind of go here, you can see from here to here to here, I can go just really close into here. You could do three if you want. I mean, you know, you guys will take this and do whatever you want with it. But now that this is all lined up, that you can really use the loops to your advantage to anchor. Okay, so let's go ahead and start that. And I'm just going to find my end. And I'm going to go through, 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 through this one here. Okay, so basically I'm just going to do two little half twists on that, nice and tight. You kind of see that? Then I'm just going to add this bead right on here, okay? This is... Um, these were, what were these from? These are from some of those uh, those twists, those twisted ropes that were so cool from Crystal Lane. So, you know, I bring it right up there and nestle that in. And then, because this is open, here's a little trick. I want one of them to be in back of this piece of wire, and I want one to be on front. So all I'm going to do is open it, the one that's sort of already in the back, I'm going to just bring around to one side and bring around to the other. You don't have to bring the whole thing through except for <laughs> except for it's going to want to get uh, it's got a mind of its own and it's already twisted. So another thing that I've written in the directions is go ahead and um, if you're going to be doing a lot of this and you don't want to totally futz, um, definitely put this end in a leather or a, ru a rubber uh, vise and then you'll have something holding on to this. Just look at this. Oh my god. Thing. Come on up here. Goodness gracious. This is where the third hand or the vise really, really helps. So all I'm doing right now, you guys, is I am just going to tightly make another two half twists and um, voila, and then you're already set. So basically, you're only sort of twisting right below the wire each time. You don't have to twist uh, below the bead because it's really not enough room to do that anyway. Hi, Janelda's here. Hello, hello. We'll have to watch Rerun. Looks like a cool project. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi, Rosadell. Rosadell is here. Uh, and what is Lois saying? That is a lot to do to be on. Yes, Lois. I know, and that's only one part. <laughs> but it's okay because I really love being with you guys and showing you this stuff. Okay, so let's just do one more. Okay. And again, so I'm doing is separating these to go on both sides of the wire, but then um, I'm going to go take both ends and go through the bead. I'm going to stand up for a second here. And you can see I've got a little bit of uh, an extra loop there. I'm just going to kind of kind of get past that and then I'm gonna go with only this one that was a lot easier that time 
and if it's a little bit big that generally means you're probably not very um, parallel with your with your lines okay okay so because I don't want these to be in um, so you, you kind of get the idea so you go 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 to all the way to the end and then if you have these loops you can just use this to do your your tying off at the end what I did right here is I just kind of went I tied it down here made my loops on the other side the very edge and then I kind of back, went, came back up and wrapped it around here if you have a bigger hole crystal you might be able to feed them back through but then you've got four pieces of 26 going through there so I didn't have a whole lot of help with that so I really just kind of like ended it right between in this area and then I had a nice uh, finished finished area um, all right, so this works, the surprise works in my head. It should work fine. I'm doing this live with you guys. Okay, so pretend these aren't here. What we're going to do is that we are going to, I didn't bring a mandrel, silly me. Uh, we're just going to form this around like maybe you've got your Starbucks cup whoops if I do that you can't see right so at the very bottom I'm just going to kind of the thing about this you guys is that you still want everything to be nice and parallel but you also want to be bringing everything around the curve so you're kind of doing a couple of different things at once but already it's looking pretty cool and if you think about it you kind of really want not really a circle but more of an oval for a cuff right and I'm sort of just giving myself a little bit I want everything to kind of be coming at the same um, you know you're, you're working a couple different things here right you're working your circle but then you're also working things that you want to be flat so it's almost like you, you really need to be working in right angles okay now if you're working on a mandrel and a, an oval mandrel would be just so cool so see as I do this I'm kind of like getting these out of out of whack too so I'm working a couple things at one time and look at that one it just went kaput all right Here's the surprise. Let's do a little bit of a lace up closure. Mixed media, extra special, cool. So, I think what I will do is I grab, you might have gotten this idea over here, is I grab some Lipstick Ranch. You guys, they are the coolest. I think they're, you might know this, Deb, if you're still on. Ah, <laughs> you love it. So, uh, Deb, do you get leather from Lipstick Ranch? I think it's www dot the lipstick there's two believe it or not branch dot coms out there I just put the put it up there so if it's not Google it and it's the one of course with the leather okay so we can do we can do a silver gold thing or how about if we do kind of dig in this sort of bronzy color here and this I believe is the lipstick ranch Ugh. this you can see how it's it's made so basically they have this sort of spiral spiral thing so everything is a little bit spiralized you know this is like like your spiral so I think if we yeah if we just sort of tug at this a little bit we can get a little bit more of a of a, a straight strip I think that's the deal okay so again I've got this huge long piece here they always come really really long and so we're definitely not going to need this whole thing at all but let's just give ourselves kind of make um, like a little fold at about I don't know the 12 inch mark 
and I'm just going to kind of, again, just really tr try to get this to be flatter. It's working. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to loop these through. And we're going to see what we get. I think I want to go top down, just kind of like your shoelace. And those of you guys who have already thought about this faster than me know that it's going to be interesting to see whether or not a, um, an odd number of these works as well. So because I don't want to be messing with this too much, I'm just going to lop it off just with like a, a thread cutter. And we're going to do this. So you're sort of getting a couple projects in one. Hopefully, hopefully you like this. And then this way, you can kind of see that this is going to hold, and you can kind of, you know, make this as open or as close as you want. There's another way that you can sort of help the sizing along. And I'm just going to twist this. I don't know if that's probably not going to work. So we're probably going to be working with both sides of the leather here. But I like starting off with the with this side. So I'm basically just lacing this up. Bellipstickwrench.com. Good. Thank you. Hi, Cindy. Hello, hello. All right. So here we go. <laughs> As with any wire project, it's always interesting to get, uh, you know, things going the right way. I think I'm going to already got a little bit of craziness going on here. Already it's looking kind of cute. This is cute, though. I like this because we're ending up with this. This is, this is working my way. Uh, and so I'm just going to kind of come down to here. And it's cute because you've got that uh, that nice X with the um, with the right side of the leather, leather, I guess. Okay. And so, I mean, this is this is something you would definitely need a loved one to help you tie on, unless you tie it uh, as you want. But you could even do like some sort of a tension bead, right? Uh, yeah. So this interesting. This side is sort of like. Or uh, you can tie it in place and just sort of like do a cute little tie. Let's see. Can you see me going? <laughs> oh, hi, Kathy Gillenwater. How are my friends there? All right. So, and so maybe you just want to, I don't know if you want to, so this is like what, the three inch, three millimeter, I'm sorry, leather strip, which is cute. I think you'd want to have, you can see I'm kind of fighting with it here to keep this spacing here. So you'd want, you want to have this temper the way you want to. Uh, otherwise, you can just pull it, you know, as tight as you can where it wants to sort of sit and then, I don't know, I think with this one, I would just do an overhand knot just because you mean you could do like a cute little bow or something, but let's just let's just keep it simple for this one and do this little overhand knot here. It keeps popping around, sorry, I'm kind of liking it. And then I always like to just kind of do like a little diagonal cut on the ends. Can you see? I like cutting with my teeth clenched. Um, pretty cute. I Now I'm thinking, oh, I should have done it with the silver. But, <laughs> but you know how that goes. So let's go ahead and we don't need this anymore. I'm not really digging that. Um, so we'll take these off here and then just see how we like it. Whoops. Sorry. Knocking you guys around. Take this off and see how we like this baby. It's nice of me to do something where I don't have to spend another hour showing you the, the finished product. Um, but 
I am liking this. Now, can I get it on my, because I have kind of a, a bigger wrist here. Let's do an out of body experience. It's got some spring to it, you know, so that might also work as well. So it's kind of cute. Again, I'm fighting with this, so you would definitely want this. You might want to pull, push them all closer, as close as you can get, or have this tempered so it's going to stay in place better. Okay, but not too bad for our first prototype, right? And then, I mean, if you kind of wanted to wear this out and people are like, oh, that's such a great bracelet, and you say, oh, well, yes, but the best part is here. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm kind of tying, tying that on. But you get the idea, right? Hi, Ann O'Neill. So good to see you here. Thank you, thank you. Um, so we've been going live for an hour, you guys. I like to kind of keep it to about an hour. Any questions at all? Linda, well, hello, my friend, Ms. Cast. Ms. Cast was a publisher for um, a lot of our bead-related magazines at Kalmbach. I see hour because I always still feel like a part of that family. Hello, my love, thinking about you and seeing you on Facebook. Uh, yeah. So, um, what else? What else? You like that leather now. You know what else I was going to do? Wouldn't it be cute to get like some fine gold chain? You could, you could let do that with one of those those beads with the plastic insert that is a tension. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but those bracelets now that have that little bead that has the plastic tension in it that you can use as sort of a little, you know, a draw bead. I don't know what it's called, but that's what I want. This is the story of my life. I'm like on Googling everything. Because I'm like, what did I do? Because something for the Madonna piece. I was like, you just need, like just that. What what is that thing called? You're like, I don't even know what it's called, but I know I've seen it before in a mechanics application, or I've seen it used in a car, or I've seen it, you know, this this world of ours, right? I know, Cindy, wouldn't it? So and then, you know. The world is your oyster as far as metal goes. So if you work in steel, you work in silver, you work with colored stuff. Um, you know, there's uh, there's just so many things that you can do. But I thought this would be cute to show you, um, just for a kind of a mixed media uh, idea. And uh, you were here first. Oh my God! By the way, so I told you I was going to do a giveaway, and then I didn't tell you how to do a giveaway. So for those of you who are left, let's spend a few more minutes. Uh, pick a number. We're going to give away two of the kits that I'm giving, uh, that of the project I'm going to be doing um, at the Great Beat Extravaganza. Pick a number between 1 and 99, and I will, um, two of you will win, and then we'll send it out. Of course, it won't get to you before Sunday, but you can always watch the, the repost, um, which I believe those are under files at the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group. So... Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of this one. I can see that there's a couple of you here that like this one too. That's really cool. Woo, good. I'm glad you stayed, Kathy Gillenwater. Very, very good. Deb, Deb has a 13. Terry's has 64. If there's, if there happens to be um, two numbers, what I'll do uh, that are the same, so you don't have to really watch, is that I'll just do like a tie, tiebreaker, for those two. But otherwise. And I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I like you to stay at the end, but I don't want to kidnap you in order to win a prize either. Oh, my goodness. You guys are the bestest. So, so again, so a little bit of uh, just to repeat this, I might have said this on other broadcasts, is that the sponsorship for John Bede is, uh, was a six-month was a six month um, deal. And so we only have two left for John Bede. Mwah. We love them um, to the ends of the earth and back and, you know, and beyond. And so 
Um, so we're going to be moving on. I am going to be really concentrating on my found object, my narrative uh, art. Um, I just, um, last night, thank God that it was, there was an extension on it, um, I just juried the Collaborate Respond project in for New York Jewelry Week. Um, and uh, since it's already been in, uh, juried in for Milano Jewelry Week, I'm just very, very, um, very, very hopeful that we will get. But you know, there's so many pro, um, projects that they that they try to um, put in for this very, very big, uh, huge undertaking that they're doing for New York Jewelry Week. Um, so it'd be such a cool if we could get into that. It'd be so so cool. But if not, we'll be okay too. Milano is a pretty big uh, thing, and we're still going to go ahead with it. Um, hi, Michelle Flores. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, Facebook user, put in the comments what your name is, because um, I can see the, whoever did number 72. I'm going to show this. Oh, no, that's Michelle. It moved up. Okay. Uh, here we go. Facebook user, whoever did 72, put your name in the next comment so that if you win, that I will know who to send this to. <laughs> uh, I know. Thank you, Susan. So... So the cool thing about this is that I just turned 59. Uh, a month and three days ago. So I'm like, now is the time. Now is the time where I'm going to really just do exactly what I love. Not that I haven't loved doing these sponsorships and, um, and the jig and the hammers and everything. But now I'm going to be doing my found object work. And I'm also going to be working with Sarah. Um, Hannes, who you know is my is my assistant for how many years now? Um, she and I are also partnering, and we have partnered in the past, but we're going to be going at this full force now to do the line British Raider Steel, um, and uh, we'll be coming out with probably six new suites of limited edition steel wire jewelry um, in August in the trunk show. So we will make sure to let you know about those in case you're interested in finished jewelry, and if not, hopefully you will support us and and share uh, share our uh, love for uh, finished jewelry and see how we can go. So thank you, and Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Lois. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, good jeans and good lighting. <laughs> Here's my Israeli friend. Check out Sarah's jewelry, you guys. You will absolutely adore her. She's been coming uh, to the broadcast, and I know it's super late there. You must not be able to, to sleep, my sweet. So I hope uh, I hope you can get back to sleep. <laughs> um, also, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm still going to be going live, but I'm going to be really uh, concentrating. I'll probably still broadcast two ways to talk about the setup for these things. So Instagram doesn't do... It doesn't lop into StreamYard yet. I'm going to have to figure this out. So we're going to have another camera, and we're going to be going in and doing, yes. Um, oh, thank you, Deb. So I didn't show you my necklace. This is from, this is a collaboration, speaking of collaborations between me and my friend Betsy Moylan. You might have seen this one. I think I finished this about a year ago with her paintings inside. Um, and, uh, yeah, so. It's it's an odd, it's it's a great piece, very comfortable and light to wear. Um, okay, thank you, Cindy. Oh, I see that you came back up. Now you're Cindy, uh, you're not just Facebook user. Awesome. Mwah. Okay, blah 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 blah. What else did I want to show you guys uh, before I left, or just re remind you of? Please do join me this Sunday uh, at seven four no. Yeah, 4.45 Pacific, 7.45 um, Eastern for the Great Beat Extravaganza. And please also do support all of my other presenters. They are amazing people. You can see Andrew Thornton uh, and William Jones of Allegory Gallery, Candy Cooper, Kate Richburg, Jill McKay, Sarah Ayler, and Kristen Fagan of Softflex, Neele Patel, my love. Uh, and then we've got a TGBE mystery event. Guess what that's going to be? bead show trivia you guys are gonna love that that's gonna be right before we end at 
3.30, I believe. And then uh, Kelly Sutton will be wrapping up on Saturday. Um, also, on Sunday, then, we're going to start with Abby Berta of The Bee Place. Uh, Heather Powers is going to come next. Cynthia Thornton, Kay Goss, Tracy Proctor of Tierra Cast, Jamie Shida, and we're going way into the uh, into uh, Hawaii land with Jamie Shida and Christy Friesen, and then we're going to wrap it up with me uh, on Sunday night. So, and um, just as a reminder, get on the beat, uh, Great Beat Extravaganza, if you're not on there already, and um, hit like. But also separately, make sure you that you are um, registered for the um, the grant the prizes. I'm going to be giving out three hammers, two sets of hammers, three during my broadcast and three during uh, as the, the giveaways. And then also, blue, 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 Kate Richburg, the Kate Richburg, is going to be using Now That's the Hammers on her show as well, on her little thing. Let's say, when is Kate's? Kate is third up, and she's going to be at 1030, if I can read that small on Saturday. So do join us. It's it's uh, if you if you can spare the whole weekend, man. There's so much content there. If you can't uh, come and join us with what you can, and again, in just a few minutes, join me over on Instagram. We're going to be talking uh, the artist nitty gritty with Lynn Yor. and so I better say goodbye so that I can hop in there and use the bathroom, refresh my lipstick, and come on back here. <laughs> Remember Instagram at Brenda Schwader Jewelry. See on the flip flop. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. Oh, but wait, but wait, there's more. Um, and then what I'll do is I will get all of your numbers. Thank you so much. And um, and announce these two winners on Brenda Schwader Jewelry Facebook page. Okay. Love you. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. It means the world to me. Love you so much. Adios.